Hello, everybody. This is Wildland Acres with Hunt and Jump, and time to work on finding a new third generation stallion. I am filming this video a little early. The, the reason should become apparent eventually, but first, we have our boy. Guardian Wolf. I promise the Halloween dress up still exists. It just it takes a little while for their uh, pasture icon to change. But he is 19 years old now. We need to find a new stud to replace him or we'll only have one stallion to breed the pasture and he will I don't, I don't have more than 50 mares in the pasture, so it would work, but I like having two stallions in the pasture. Actually, this is third gen. I think the, there are more than 50. I was getting mixed up with second gen. This guy has black. He has cream. He has non-done one. It's two copies of Sooty Plus, which is something I really like. It's Pangaree. He has DP. He has chocolate. Not only does he have chocolate, he has chocolate from Kansad and Sons, the first stallion in the game to have chocolate. You can't replace this. Sue White 20. He has Ice Nine, which is a fantasy gene. If we get a stallion without a fantasy gene, that will be nice. Let's see what happens. Because I've noticed that like most of my stallions have fantasy genes. But yeah. But to get a third generation stallion, you need to go look at the progeny of a second generation stallion. So we have these two boys, Boing 2, which is descended from one of my foundation stallions, Guardian Pride. And then we have Silver Ghost, which is a stallion I got from another player. But you look at these two, they're both A, they're both a papered stallions, but this one was born a paper and you look like there's no genetic modification. He is how he was born, which is a good thing. But if you look at Silver Ghost, he was all like, you'll have to take my word for it. it he was also born a, a papered stallion and he still is an a papered stallion, but I put a 5% breeding boost on him. So he is a higher A paper to horse than Boeing, which means his offspring should be way better than Boeing's offsprings. So we'll only be looking at his family for our Gen 2 herd, which is kind of sad, especially since our, or not Gen 2, our Gen three herd and since our other gen three stallion is also from this guy but this guy is of quality that we'll get our best stallions from colts from him now the reason why i need to record this early like i'm probably going to be putting this up early november when i'm waiting for pastures to open again for more breeding but what we do is I noticed that Silver Shark, our other third gen sign, was actually superior to Guardian Wolf. It just, I was attached to Guardian Wolf and he was very old at the time. I was keeping him until, uh, keeping him in pasture until he either aged out or too old to breed, which he'll be too old to breed next month. So I want to test these colts against Guardian Wolf to get another stallion, which is superior to him. Now to make that easier, because, so for comparison testing, we could have to go through all of these unnamed stallions and then search for him in all these guys, or if you put a couple spaces at the beginning of the name, he will his name will now be up at the top of the list for me to find him 
to compare and test him to a large number of horses. So now we go back to our generation two pasture, get silver ghost, go to his family, go to his foals. Now we have a whole bunch of horses here. We have geldings, we have Spain mares, more geldings mares like there are stallions but you have to sort through all of them so if you go to the bottom you can deselect everything but stallion and now search them and now we have one page of stallions to look through oh no we should have a yearling, that best of pasture colt from last year. Like, like he would be right here if he was a stallion, but I have something embarrassing to tell you guys. So while I was going through and like gelding and spaying and moving horses in the past few videos, we kind of had a misfortune. Like you saw like all of those warnings, make sure to double check your horses. The mass spay gelding was gonna happen. And I just like breeze through them. This is our best and pasture boy from well, this year. Oh, like by the time I post this video, it'll be last year and he'll be a two year old, but he's a gelding. In real world, this would be a done deal. It's really sad. I've seen people accidentally uh, uh, castrate their animal that they wanted to keep as a breeding animal, usually with goats, because that's what I look at with breeding animals the most. But yeah. In this game though, like, He's still young, he hasn't been bred quite obviously, so there is something that a trick we can do. So I'm gonna name him so I can find him in a search list. I will call him uh, the ghost. And now, we're gonna go to, under advanced facilities. There's unalter horses. We go here. Unaltering a horse costs one GMT token. You can only unalter horses you bred yourself. So this means you can't, like like some people, they will spay and geld a horse because they don't want it to be used for breeding before selling it and allowing it to be a show horse. But uh, this means that the breeder still has the ability to choose whether or not they will sell a horse for breeding or not. You will you would have to send it back to them for them to unalter the horse. Now this is a big thing. You will not be refunded if the horse gets unaltered again. If a horse did not pass testing the first time, it won't pass testing the second time. This costs one GMT token, which costs 10 investment vouchers, which costs over 12,000 horse bucks each. I have a bunch of GMT tokens, so that's not something that is an issue for me. Yeah, and this is why I moved the Guardian Wolf's name to the top of the list. Okay. Where are you? There he is. I started to scare that he wasn't on the list. I had to do something else. So we're gonna unalter this horse. Click here to view them. He is now a stallion. We are going to be careful not to immediately spay or geld him right now because that would be bad and would cost another token, which true, I have tokens, but it's 
going around in circle and spaying gelding a horse constantly is a little bit overkill, especially since those tokens are very valuable. They can be used for other things and I can use them. Not necessarily right now, but they will find a use eventually. Okay. So now we'll go back to his dad, back to family. Deselect everything that's not a stallion. Search horses, still one page of stallion. So we got less than 25, but he is back in the running. Which true, we may or may not even use them. Like he's got fantasy genes, and I'm kind of like, yeah, I should try to lean away from fantasy genes too much. But he was the best in pasture. We have to, we have to throw him, put his head in the ring. So now the first thing I want to do, we have all of these stallions. They have various levels of testing done. I'm gonna th go through each of these stallions and if they haven't had breeding advice yet, run them through breeding advice. If they haven't run through breeding advice, I'm gonna comparison test them to guardian wolf. And only, and I'm gonna geld all the ones that don't test superior to guardian wolf. There he is, a lot easier than going through the whole list. Silver Sun is superior, so we'll keep him. Different Silver. Now I will say that these tests cost 8,000 a piece. Like this is not, not small change, so. For a younger group, it's uh, easier to not do, like for a younger channel, I would not do a whole lot of comparison testing. If you only have like $30, you test three horses and you're done for. Well, not $30, $30,000. Blue Ghost. Okay, this one is about as good as, so we're gonna guild him. Ghost pretzel. He's superior, I'm thinking that all these Older ones with names, I probably tested them before, but I can't share it. Like, I know Silver Shark is good. Okay, this one is labeled superior. Same here. But here's some other horses that, okay, so he's been, you can tell like we don't have untested in brackets afterwards, so he has been tested or put through breeding advice, but let's comparison test him now. There is no visual cue to whether a horse has been visual, uh, comparison tested. It's all up to memory, or you can go to notes. So it looks like notes may not be available to, okay, notes. You can put notes and put AG, AGA guardian wolf. So you can, you and also everybody else who wasn't, who didn't do the testing they all know what the testing's like. This can be good for when you're putting a stallion up for stud and you can be like, 
they're superior to these horses, they're ADA to those horses, and they can ch then check out those horses to better figure out what quality the horse they're looking at is. This guy is superior. I'm just gonna put sup right now because I wanna get through these guys fast. This guy is superior too. Like Guardian Wolf was like one of the high like one of the higher horses that I could breed from a sign which didn't have a five percent boost, but so you can tell that the five percent boost really really gives the foals a boost too. This one is AGA or as good as. Ooh, this one's pretty. This one is untested, so let's put them through breeding advice first because that's free. Okay, now, now since it didn't uh, gelt him there, now we do the eight thousand dollar test. He is as good as so, and gelt spam. It's like I guess it's kind of best because that horse is gorgeous. Like I will say, like, like the band of ice nine right below the tiger eye with the black mane. It's like okay, yeah, I sh if I I should be strong and get a stallion without fantasy, but I will say. He is gorgeous with like lighter and then the darker mask and so, but he's a gelding. I'm not using him as a stallion, even though he was so tempting. Okay, let's refresh this page so I can see which horses I've labeled superior and which ones I have not. We have a lot of fantasy stuff because the stallion has fantasy genes. But there's also horses without fantasy. But first of all, we just need to figure out which horses are the quality we want. See, it looks like this guy does not have fantasy genes. He's untested. So we do the free test and then the expensive test. And another superior. Oh, here's a warm blood. A warm, like I will say warm bloods, like since we already have a brother of these guys who is a draft in, in the third gen pasture. It's like, I still, I, like, I like my warm bloods. I don't want it to be mostly drafts. Like I like drafts, but I don't want to turn into just drafts. I don't want to get rid of my warm bloods. So warm blood will have advantage if I'm choosing between a warm blood or a draft, but all the warm bloods so far seem to be like except for silver tardis, like they're all seeming to be spay or to be gelded. You don't spay a boy horse. If you do, there are issues, and I don't know what what happened. Eating in place. And now we don't have to do the expensive one. So 
south runs to. Oh, this one's a little one. I'm kind of. Yeah, he's a draft. He's not a cob yet. Point fifteen. I think it's fourteen that they turn into cobs. One superior. And this one, it looks like he's got some pearl action. You can tell because he's got kind of like that metallic sheen. Like it's not just tan, but he's like pearly. Better show horse than a reader. Oh, what is this guy has jellyfish? Yes, he is a jellyfish boy, which means he is a fantasy gene horse. But this does mean that if we choose him, the jellyfish gene won't die. But let's see, let's first test him. He's superior, so he's still in the running. Then we do this guy. This is another boy with no fantasy genes. Like if they had fantasy genes, fantasy genes would be up here in red, even before you genetically test them. So, giving advice. Oh, I probably should have genetically tested all these guys as I went through. That's done on my part. This guy is aging anyway. Do this one. Oh, this one is pretty. I would. Not be adverse to that being our new stallion. Except now I am. I really should have done reading advice on him first. And we have this one with fantasy genes. And spay. And now we are down to Daffy Ghost at the end. It's gonna be so embarrassing and a little scary for the rest of the horses in the group if this guy does not test superior. He is superior, okay. So now I realize that since genetic, like we've now checked quality on all these horses. So all these horses are even better than Guardian Wolf. But now like genetics is going to be a factor. So I really should have genetic tested all of these horses when I was going through their pages earlier. Genetic, performance. I know that he's gonna pass because he's superior. Reading inspection, A. Control, wait. Okay. Still, ah, no. It's always scary when that happens. 
Fortunately, you'll have a little piece of dialogue that pops up and asks you if you want to sell back the horse, uh, sell the horse back to the game or geld spay it before it actually does it. If you accidentally click that, that's a lifesaver. Like in the case of Selling horses back to the game, it really is. Genetic testing, performance inspection, bleeding inspection. And this guy. Like, what do you guys think? Like, if he passed, if this guy passes all the other things, I'm going to throw out these guys. Do you, do, like, do you guys want me to use this guy as a stud so we can keep our jellyfish gene? Or should we stay true to wanting a stallion without fantasy genes? So, let's see. We are now down to 14 horses up to consideration, but we need to narrow that down quite a bit. So, one thing is, their father has the done, done factory promoter one gene. So if both the mother and the father pass the done factory promoter gene to a foal, so it has two copies of it and it has done and it doesn't have non done one, it will be kind of like faintly stripey, which means both the mother and the father have to have it. So if we want, this full, this stallion to be able to have stripey, extra stripey done and children, we need him to have done factor promoter one. So we go to pigment modifiers, we go to done factor promoter, DFP one, because these foals will not have DFP two, I'm pretty sure. Push must have, and we turn like this only works with horses that are gen that were genetic tested. The reason why I had to go through and genetic test all of them, but we go from fourteen stallions to six. So now let's look at these ones. Out of them, the only one without fantasy genes is this guy. He is double. The cream though, so I'm a little concerned. This guy, homozygous for black, like this stands for Eumelin, and it's homozygous, so you'll only have black base full. So this is a good thing. He carries brown, which I enjoy. The two creams are a little scary. He is done. He only has one study I like too. He has silver, which is fun, done factor promoter. He has DP. Wait a minute. All, he has Axiom too. He has a fantasy gene. All of these horses have fantasy genes. <laughs> you see, this is how I get to all these signs of fantasy genes. Either fantasy gene or none, no done factor promoter. See, he has Roan, but yeah, the reason why I was looking at him ahead of these ones was I was thinking he didn't have fantasy genes. I just can't see it because his colors washed out. So since he's got two creams, I think I'll rule him out. So Right now, it's looking like our yearling is, like he won't be ready to breed next year. So I'll have to put somebody else in the pasture for next year, but it's looking more and more likely that we're gonna go with this guy. This guy is our warm blood, so he has extra points from that. He has, one copy of black, so that's not as good. Let's check. I mean, his mother is 
She only, she's a chestnut, so I cannot genetically modify him to have gotten a black gene from her because she don't she doesn't have a black gene. So this this the this recessive allele is a big downside from him. He has one cream, which means we have the tiger eye effect from him. He carry he has two copies of tiger eye one. So he can pass on to his kids, but not all of them. So we're less likely to have a whole bunch of Carmelos at the end because I like color. Like I really like his base color here underneath the nexus. It's gorgeous. Unfortunately, he can genetically modify a lot of things, but he can't take the fancy genes off. He has done, which is necessary for done factor promoter, and I kind of require done in, in my stallions. And he has non done ones, so he can. Throw that too. The little bulls he gives on done one too, very likely won't be able to see the factor promoter on. But I like non done one too, because done non done one creates this really crazy fun pattern, which is really fun for when you can't see it because you couldn't see the the stripe piece on him anyway because he only has one copy. He has sooty and sooty plus tiger eye. He has kit jeans. I don't really worry about these as much as long as they don't, they aren't likely to throw lethal white and they're not very obvious on the horse because I want to see the color. So let's look. This one has two black jeans. This one has two black genes and has GEP, which is another recessive gene where you need two co one copy from each parent to show. So, and he has two dense femalin. Did this guy have DP? No, he doesn't. So it, we're looking less and less likely we're gonna go for him. This one has one DP. He also has white 10, which kind of, covers up some of the color, but. We have this guy, he has ice. Done, none done one. Sorry, sorry. So right now, It looks like we will do, oh, this is Silver Shark, he's already in the pasture. So di different Silver looks like he's most likely to go into the pasture because he has two dense family genes. He has Sori and Sori Plus, so two Sori, so he has four darkening genes. He carries Tiger Eye too. Um, okay, Silver Shark doesn't seem to be carrying any tiger eye. He has done. He doesn't have non done one, but his brother in the pasture does. He's not a Carmelo. He carries some other fun things like satin, but he has GP. Which means his he would be able to have foals that have GP or then factor promoter one. If they get it from him, him and their mother. And since he doesn't have non done one, that makes things even more likely that we might get foals that actually show DFP one. It's like I keep on trying to breed for DFP one and I don't get foals that show it. At least not breeding foals. So yeah, what do you guys think? Should we go for Dothy Ghost? Not for November, but for December reading? Anyway, even though, like, cause the only real thing against him is the ability to throw chestnuts. 
Like he has Tiger Eye One instead of Tiger Eye Two, but both of them are good. And I don't don't want to lose either of them. Oh, and he also doesn't have GP. So should we put Dorothy Ghost in after we like spent the money to unalter him? Right now I am going to put different silver into the pasture just in case I forget. If you guys want me to switch it out for Dorothy Ghost, let me know. But we're gonna go over to Guardian Wolf. Move him to our primary barn. And then we go back to thing, different silver. This is what he looks like now, and you see all of his silver dapples. Dapples are pretty. Wait a minute. Did I? I should actually modify this horse. I'm kind of confused, but we spent a GMT on him too, so I guess it's only fitting that this guy goes into our third gen pasture for now. Please comment if you would like to see any changes to that. Like I'm not 100% set right now and we might find, we might get a really nice non-fantasy fold with GFP1 later. Or we could go in and look at the horses without GFP1 later. Like we can go to Pingdom Modifiers instead of must have GFP1, must not have. That opens up all of these guys and we can genetic use a GMT token to genetically modify um, GFP onto one of these guys since their dad has it. You can't genetically modify bred foals, like horses that aren't created, and that you can't genetically modify genes on them that their parents cannot feasibly give them. But if we look into the GMT route, Silver Tardis might be a good one to go for. Um, let me see, this guy only has one E. Um, I don't know, if we do that, we would have the Jellyfish Boy. Like we would have this guy, but honestly, he's basically Silver Tardis but as draft, so Silver Tardis would win. So do you guys want me to GMT Silver Tardis or the Jellyfish Boy? Please comment below. Right now we have a stallion in our third gen pasture. So we don't need to worry about not all the mares having foals. But yeah, actually, I don't know. If we will breed this year, see what we get full wise uh, from second gen pasture next year. See if we get a really, a really nice colt without the fantasy genes. And if we don't, then we can look into genetically modifying silver tardis. Unless you guys unless you guys want me to do it now. And then I can do another video and uh, genetically modify him, get him ready for the for when the pastures open for me on the on the seventh of November. Well, seventh of November in a future time zone. So sometimes like I wait till really late on at night on the 6th. But this was me going through Colts to try to find a good one 
for our Gen 3 pasture. Thank you so much for following me on this journey. Hope you're having a wonderful day and luck with your own stables. Have a good day. Bye.